welcome to lecture 9 which is on parallax in photographs. Today you will learn how the parallax is generated in the aerial photographs and what is the utility of this parallax and how we can measure the parallax. So, let us begin. The parallax term we know from our background knowledge of the optics this is the apparent change in the relative position of the stationary object caused by a change in the view position. So, if we change our view position and if the object position is also changing with the view position then the parallax is introduced. Parallax is removed in optics when we have the upright image and the down image real object and the apparent image and we try to move our eye and both the object and the image they are moving in the same direction. So, as far as the aerial photography is concerned the parallax in aerial photography is the apparent difference in the position of the two consecutive photographs because they have been taken from two different positions up in the space. Now, it is a, a nearby if nearby object we are observing alternately with our left eye and then with our right eye its location will appear to shift in the position and this is happens normally when I close my eye one eye see the object in front of me and then second time I close my the second eye and see the object I find a change in the location and this apparent shift is known as the parallax. In aerial photogrammetry what is changing is actually the position of the camera is changing and because the photographs have been taken from different exposure station up in the space. So, the parallax is introduced in the photographs and we are using the property of this parallax to determine the elevations of different points on the earth surface. So, we are going to learn that particular aspect here. In aerial photogrammetry a very important figure which we understand is given here there are two points on the ground point A and point B on the ground with different heights because the ground is undulating and these points have been image have been photographed from two different positions. So, one is this position and another is this position. If we look at the photographic plane the image of these two point is A 1 and B 1 on the left photo and on the right one it is A 2 and B 2. We can see from this also that these two objects have been imaged from two different positions and the displacement which is in the direction of the flight like A 1 B 1 or A 2 B 2 that is the x parallax, parallax in the x direction the direction of the flight. And when we have the overlapping photographs to see the 3D view of the model then it is measured as a linear distance and this linear distance which we are measuring on the photograph it can be related to the height of these objects like H A and H B are the height of the objects. And what is the linear distance which we are measuring? It is shown in this diagram x a and x b these are those linear distances which we are measuring on the two photographs. So, consider now the two exposure station one is O 1 and another is O 2 and there are two points a point p and point q on the ground their images would appear small p and small q on the left photograph while q dash and p dash on the right photograph. So, what I do is that parallel to line O 1 q if I draw a line 
from O2 and that is this line which is called O2 Q line. Then if I measure the distance P P dash or if I measure the distance Q Q dash that is called the parallax which is present in the image in the direction of the flight line or it is called x parallax. Now, since these objects are situated at different height p is lower than the object q. So, what happens is that q q dash distance which I am measuring linearly on the photograph is greater than p p dash distance. So, that means higher the object more is the parallax present in the photograph. Now, there are basically two types of parallax the third one is derived from the first one one is the absolute parallax we call it a x parallax or we also call it a horizontal parallax. This parallax is the algebraic difference of the distances on the two images we have the left image and the right image with some overlap region. And if we can measure the linear distance with respect to the nadar photographic nadar or the principal point and if we could measure these two distances on the left and the right photograph and take the algebraic difference of these two distances. Then that value is known as the x parallax or absolute parallax of that particular point. Now, the second is the y parallax or vertical parallax and it is obvious that it will be in the perpendicular direction. So, in the stereo photographs the vertical photographs are taken from the same fly height. So, y parallax normally is absent if they are taken along the x axis along a line, but when the photograph has not been taken aligned along the x axis and it was a shift then the y parallax would be present otherwise normally y parallax is absent. There is another term here which is the differential parallax and if I have point A and measure the absolute parallax of point A on the photograph and if I have another point B and measure the distance they, then difference of the two is called the differential parallax. So, I measure the distance A A dash I dash measure the distance B B dash and take the difference of the two then I will get the differential parallax and this differential parallax is very very important in the sense to know which point is higher which point is lower and then ultimately if I have to determine the elevations of those points I can determine. So, here you can see the stereoscopic view two images with overlap region. So, we can see two towers here one one and the another one and the same two towers are seen from a different location of the aerial camera on the right photo. This is my direction of the flight line and if we can find out for any object we will take the top and we will take the bottom distance top to top distance on the two photographs creating the stereo vision after creating the stereo vision if we measure that distance and if I measure bottom to bottom distance then this is showing me the parallax values displacement between the top and the bottom image. So, these are again two different images with overlap region of the same area. So, if we apply that principle of parallax we can determine as we see the different objects in the left photo and in the right photograph we can actually determine the height of the objects in the stereo pair of vertical aerial photographs. So, we have to understand now how we can use the principle of parallax how we can measure it. So, that ultimately we determine the third dimension from this. We are using a very popular device which is called 
parallax bar. It is also known as a stereometer. So, we are using the parallax bar or a stereometer actually to take the measurements between the two points on a stereo pair. So, when the stereo vision is obtained, when 3D model has been created. So, what we are doing is uh, let us understand first of all the parallax bar, there is a metallic road, you can see a circular metallic road here and this metallic road has a two arms in the perpendicular direction attached to that left arm and the right arm and the left arm and right arm both are fitted with the glass graticles. So, these are the glass slides, we call it a graticules because they are etched, they are marked with certain marks. We call them floating marks and this road is graduated. So, there are some graduations here and then there is a micrometer screw at the end, a circular micrometer screw you can move it in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. The distance between the two plates glass graticules will change. So, this distance will increase or decrease as you move the micrometer screw. So, here on the glass plate there are three kind of marks are there, one is cross, another is dot and third is the circle which is etched on the glass. In fact, these are the points with respect to which I am actually focusing on my concentrating on my objects in order to take the measurements. So, let us see in the next slide here, the enlarged view of the glass plate which is fitted into those perpendicular arm grass graticles. So, we have three marks cross, circle and a dot. We have to select one of these on both the. So, if we select dot in the left graticle, we have to select the dot in the right graticle and these three are given as per our convenience. Some people feel that the cross is very good for them when they are looking at the stereo model. So, depending upon the convenience, you can make a selection of those floating marks and you have to now in order to measure the distance from this in order to measure the parallax bar reading from the parallax bar, uh, we have to keep let us say a dot which we have selected on the left photo on a particular object and on the right also the dot on its image. If I move this micrometer drum by one complete rotation, it is graduated into 100 parts and one complete rotation will give me 1 millimeter shift here. So, 1 by 100th of a millimeter we can measure, this is the least count of the distance which we can measure with the help of the parallax bar. So, we can go up to a second place of a millimeter with the help of the micrometer drum here, micrometer screw here. So, we read here both the values. So, what is done here? When we are creating a stereo model and we are selecting a particular object to take the parallax bar readings, we have to fix this particular arm with the help of a screw here. You can change the distance if you can loosen this screw, you can change the distance between the two plates. So, what you have to do is in the entire overlap region, you have to ensure that you can keep these floating marks. These floating marks are to be kept within the overlap region. So, you can open it fully or add per convenience so that you can cover the whole area. And once you have done it, you fix that distance and that extra distance will be cancelled out when we are doing some mathematical calculations because we are taking the differential parallax here in the observation. So, now we are using a mirror stereoscope and we know from our previous lecture 
how a 3D model is created. So, we have the left photograph, we have the right photograph, they are to be oriented properly in order to view 3D model under a mirror stereoscope. And then we can use the parallax bar. So, there is a parallax bar here kept on the top of the photograph and we have to all look through the magnifying lens, the left one and the right one. The points on the stereo pairs are selected whose parallax bar reading are to be measured. So, it could be many points whose height we want to determine, but the stereo pair has to be properly oriented in order to take the measurements. And what is the meaning of this? The properly oriented meaning of that is the two photographs they are aligned in the same direction as the flight line direction and this process is also known as the baselining of the stereo pair. So, whenever we are dealing with stereo pair large number of photographs they are to be aligned in x direction or the direction of the flight. So, that is called orientation of the photograph or baselining of the photograph. So, now we have to understand the first step that we are going to orient the pair of photographs for stereo viewing under the stereoscope. So, we have to first of all take the photographs with the overlap region and try to check the overlap how much is the overlap and keep that overlap inward direction under a mirror stereoscope and try to see a 3D model of the overlap region. So, once you actually align them in a particular direction and try to see 3D model, then on these two photographs you can identify a principal point of the photograph which you have learned in your previous lecture and also conjugate principal point. Conjugate principal point is the adjacent principal point which has been transferred on in the overlap region of the connecting photograph. So, principal point and conjugate principal point we are doing on the left photo as well as we are doing on the right photograph and this we have to do stereoscopically under a stereoscope. So, if I join this line on the photograph and extend this line and similarly I do on the right photograph. So, this particular line is basically indicating the flight line direction or the direction of the x axis. So, what we have to do is a stereo pair I have to align now on my base, base could be a drawing sheet. So, I draw a line on the drawing sheet and I put the stereo pair in such a way so that the line drawn on the photograph is matching on the line on the drawing sheet. So, this is x directional alignment, but we have to change that distance between the two photographs. Now, when you are looking under the stereoscope, uh, you can change this particular distance between the two photographs till you see the good stereo model, good 3D model. So, once you see good 3D model and you have aligned the photographs in the direction of the flight line then you have to move to the next step and your next step is now you are creating a 3D model. So, you are creating a good 3D model and stereo vision is seen under the stereoscope and when uh, you have created the stereo vision then uh, next step will be to use the parallax bar for taking the reading. So, it is very very important that the step number 1 is done very carefully and after uh, you have done the baselining you create a stereo pair once you have created the stereo vision normally what we do is we fix the photograph position. So, that while we are working with the parallax bar we do not disturb the stereo model which we have already created. So, we put a, a, a cello tape or kind of a thing which so that the corner so that we fix their position, fix their orientation so and along the baseline. So, once this has been done now 
these photographs are properly oriented and I will identify now features on the left photo and features on the right photo, so that we can actually take the measurements. So, these features are to be seen in the three dimensional view and because uh, visual interpretation will uh, give us the size, the shape, the tone of these uh, objects which are present in the photograph. So, we now are selecting the photographs in the with the points in the overlap region and we are taking the parallax bar reading between that point and its image. So, my second step is now I am using that instrument which is called parallax bar or the stereometer. So, I am selecting the floating mark and keeping my left floating mark on let us say object A and its image is A dash on the right photograph. So, I will try to move micrometer drum till the floating mark on the right plate actually comes on the image of object A which is A dash. So, this has to be done stereoscopically. Initially, you will see two floating marks, one from the left plate and the another from the right plate. So, you have to move your micrometer drum in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction till their two dots are fused become one single dot and touching the object which you have selected to take the reading. So, it should rest on that particular object and you should not see two floating marks you should see one floating mark. So, once you have done that and if you are moving little more micrometer drum, you will find that the dots which have fused together, they are either now moving little up or little down. So, by a certain distance, if you are further moving, then you will find that they are separated out. So, you have to take that particular reading where the floating mark is just touching the object resting on the object. Because it floats in the air, it goes vertically up and down uh, within a certain range of the micrometer drum that is why this is known as the floating mark. It appears to be floating, but we have to take the reading when it is exactly touching the object. Now, there are two sets of readings, there are a main scale you have to read the main scale from here, this is all in millimeter and then you have to read the vernier scale. As I told you the least count is 0 0.01 mm. So, you have to take care of that particular least count multiply by that reading because there are 100 graduation. If you move the 1 micrometer drum, 1 complete round 100 graduation, 1 millimeter will change on the main scale. So, our job is that now we read both the readings when the dot is fused and 3D model is perfect. Main scale reading and vernier scale reading we have to add that together. So, I have shown for example, that 43 mm is the main scale reading and micrometer drum is 23 at the 23 graduation out of 100. So, this becomes 0 0.23 mm we are going to add them together. So, my parallax bar reading at that particular point is 43.23 mm. Now, one reading is not enough whenever we are doing experiments with the instruments. So, normally um, uh, to avoid any error in our observations, we take more than one observations and take the average of that. So, same thing we are doing here. We will disturb our uh, parallax bar and then again keep the parallax bar or the same point and in the similar way take the second reading, second set of reading. So, when the dots are fused, we will take second set of reading, again disturb it, take third set of reading. So, we are taking several parallax bar reading at that point. So, normally three readings are good enough to take the average, but you can take even more also and the average value is taken. Why? Because our height measurements which you will learn later are very, very much sensitive to this particular reading. 
So, any error in this reading will be reflected in the height computations when you are doing computation. So, once you have done for one point, now you might uh, like to determine the height of other points in the overlap region. So, you are going to do with the point B let us say and then you are going to do with the C and D and E and F. So, if you want to determine uh, the uh, height of those points you have to take those parallax bar readings several readings and the average of that. Now, once you have done that we know that two important aspects are there in stereoscopic parallax. The parallax you are measuring is uh, at any point is directly related to the elevation of the point I have shown you that and it will be a greater value for higher points than the lower point. So, now you got the values and you can see that yourself. So, what you are doing now the next step is you are taking certain more measurements on the stereo pair. There is a term called absolute parallax and we can determine that displacement along or parallel to the flight line direction and it is represented by the algebraic difference of the distances which you are measuring on the left image and the right image along x axis along the direction of the flight. So, my next job is to determine the absolute parallax of the point. So, same stereo pair and on that stereo pair if I have to determine the absolute parallax of a point A. So, this is the point A on the left photograph and its image is A dash on the right photograph. So, I have already determined the direction of the flight line I can mark the y directions perpendicular to the flight line in the y direction. So, along axis how far that point is along x axis I have to measure this distance. So, I am going to measure this distance let us say this is x a distance and then on the right photograph I am measuring x a distance same x dash a distance and this as I have told you earlier also whenever you are doing distance measurement there is a scale called parallax scale it is much better in accuracy than the normal scale. So, we are using that parallax scale in fact to carry out the measurements directly on the photograph. So, we know x a we know x dash a if I take the difference algebraic difference we have to take care of the proper sign proper sign in the sense that there are four quadrants now in the photograph. So, we know that in which quadrant the x is negative and which quadrant the y is negative. So, take the example of point b we are measuring x b distance this is x b distance, but this is negative it is in the quadrant where x ordinate is negative. So, this b dash point is lying in the quadrant where the distance is negative. So, x b dash will be negative. So, I am keeping negative value here and taking the algebraic difference by definition. So, when I take the algebraic difference in case of a p b that minus and minus sign becomes plus. So, I am adding these two values in first case I am subtracting in second case I am adding actually I am taking algebraic difference I am taking care of the proper sign of the x coordinate and differential parallax will be the difference of the value. So, I take the difference of the two values delta p I can calculate differential parallax and this differential parallax is very important when we are doing certain computation. In this diagram you can see that uh, there is a, a, a tree on the left there is a tree on the right and we can see the top and the bottom of both the uh, on both the photographs the top and the bottom of the tree. So, if I take top to top while the model is a stereo model if I measure the distance and I call is a dt distance and I measure this distance 
db distance now this uh, parallax bar reading if i take both the parallax bar readings and one reading is 15.20 and another is 13.50 and i take the difference of that it is 1.70 so parallax bar reading here parallax bar reading here take the difference of these parallax bar readings will give me differential parallax so differential parallax of the top and the bottom will be 1.70 now there is a geometric relationship between the x parallax and the object of the height and this geometric relationship we are actually using for computation of the height small h let's understand it this is the left camera position and that is the right camera position and i am imaging taking the two photographs and there is a, an object a on the ground and this is that particular object on the ground and he here a dash is there image on the left photograph and this is the image on the right photograph so i have two triangles one is uh, this bigger triangle which is formed and another is this particular triangle and this particular triangle is made when i draw this particular line here a parallel line here this a triangle is formed so i am using the property of the similar triangle from this figure here uh, base is the exposure station distance between the two exposure stations if h is the height of the object a above a datum above the mean sea level f is the focal length of the camera lens and p is the parallax which we have measured so we can establish a relationship using the property of the similar triangles and which is h minus h upon b so h minus h would be actually uh, this distance this distance upon b is equal to f upon p if we look at this particular triangle if f upon p distance so we are using the property of the similar triangle and bringing small h on the left side so we get this relationship which is capital h minus b f upon p so if i substitute the value in this relationship i can get the height determinant so thank you very much uh, for understanding the parallax